right now, Reverend Craig Demo, once again, I welcome you uh, at that time. Uh, so I would like to request you, please share the word of God, the Lord uh, put in your heart. Well, thank you again. Praise the Lord. Uh, just kind of a little bit of a program note for those that uh, normally listen at this time to the Sunday healing service. Uh, we actually are uh, kind of taking a break away from the series that we've been on dealing with healing from the inside out to talk about uh, the Father heart of God. And uh, the message that we have for you today is just simply entitled, Receive the Heart of the Father. And uh, really our fatherhood on the earth is a, a reflection of hopefully what we see in the, the fa Father heart of God. And uh, not all of us had perfect fathers. Not all of us are, are perfect fathers. As a matter of fact, none of us are perfect fathers, but we have a heavenly father that is a perfect father. And, and for us to really be able to love much in the earth as we've been uh, commanded to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, our ability to do that is based on our ability to receive the love heart of the Father. Praise God. So we're going to talk about that. And you see, when Jesus came into the earth, he was re 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 revealing to the people the Father heart of God. And uh, before that time, uh, the, the uh, God's covenant people, the Jews, the Hebrews, uh, they knew God as the creator. They knew him as a covenant-keeping God. They knew him as a merciful God, but they did not know him as father. And the radical idea that Jesus introduced into the earth was the idea that God could be your father. Praise God. And as the one who created you, he actually is the one that is your father. And that is so wonderful when you realize it, because it's one thing to relate to God as somebody who is almighty. It's quite another thing to relate to him on an intimate kind of level, an intimate basis. And that gives us confidence before him, also gives us dependence. We have a number of scriptures that we're going to look at today. And as I was praying about this message, you can go ahead and put the second slide up on the screen. As I was praying about this, I was thinking about a revelation that God uh, gave to his first covenant people, the Jews. And we are looking now at uh, Isaiah chapter 45, Isaiah 45, 11, and that's where God speaks this, thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hands, command ye me. Now, this is an amazing thing. One of the things that stands out to people when they read that scripture is the fact that God is talking about uh, us commanding the works of his hands. And uh, that's amazing. But you would not have confidence to be able to do something like that unless you knew for sure what his will was concerning his sons. And that's what the first part of that scripture is for, is to show us that if we understand what God's will is, that we can actually speak forth uh, the will of God into the earth concerning the works of his hands. And uh, so this is an amazing thing. But notice, even under the old covenant, God was given a revelation of the father heart of God because he, he's talking about his sons. Let's go to the next scripture there. And we have quite a few to go through. And of course, not really that much time. So we're going to probably be a little bit uh uh, you know, uh, hurried as it were with some of these. But I want you to see something right here in the, the Gospel of John, chapter one. It says this, speaking of Jesus, it says, as many as received him, received Jesus to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God even to those that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, in other words, not of natural parentage, nor of the will of the flesh, not just because you have earthly parents that want a child, nor of the will of man, 
but of God. Now, this is amazing because God's first covenant people were not sons. They actually were servants. See, we have a better covenant based upon better promises, it says over in the book of Hebrews. And one of the reasons that's true is because we are in, in uh, we're in a different position with God. We actually can speak to God as our father, not just almighty God, which is great. See, not just creator, which is wonderful, not as just one that is able to do things for us, but as somebody that we know is our very father. And I want, I want to show you the next scripture there. Go to the next slide. And it deals with the fact that there's a difference between God's first covenant people and God's uh, new creation people. That's what we are as believers today. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Because you are sons. God has sent forth the spirit of your son of, of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba is actually an untranslated word from the Aramaic, and it's like the, the, the equivalent we have in English would be daddy. Okay? And so we, he's he's our daddy. He's our father. Praise God. And then in verse 7, it says, wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Praise God. That's wonderful. We relate to God today as uh, our father. And did you notice that because we're sons, we're heirs of God through Christ Jesus? Another place in the New Testament, it says that we are joint heirs with Jesus, which means that everything that Jesus owns, we own also. Praise God. And so this is wonderful because you see, the old covenant people, the Jews, that, you know, they showed us a lot of things. And of course, they gave us the scripture and we must accept the Jewish Messiah in order to be born again. But here's the remarkable thing is they only related to God as the, the creator or the covenant keeping God as Elohim or as Jehovah. And, and that was great. And there was a lot and God did a lot of things for them under that arrangement. But you see, they did not actually uh, own or possess anything. All right. In other words, they were not part of the family. It would be like if you have in your house your children, but you also have a housekeeper. The housekeeper lives there and the housekeeper has access to the house, but the housekeeper is there as an employee, as basically uh, your servant. Whereas the children, even though they know less than the housekeeper, <laughs> praise God, they actually own the place. So it's a whole different situation. And all it has to do with is pedigree, has to do with relationship. It's a difference between a servant and a son. Now that said, when we think about the father heart of God, you know, many times we're going to go to what we call the story of the prodigal son. And I want to walk through this story and let's go over there to the next slide. And we're going to go to the gospel of Luke. And uh, we're going to go through this uh, piece by piece. Now, right at the beginning of this story, you know, it says in verse 11 of Luke 15 uh, that uh, a certain man had two sons. Praise God. Now, this is important. By the way, people call this a parable. I don't believe this is a parable. I don't, I, I, he says a certain man. I believe he's referring to somebody in particular. And uh, so anyway, but we focus on the son who left, but notice there wasn't just one son. There was two sons. Praise God. Now, verse 12, he says, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided unto them, not just him, divided to them his living. Now, notice the father, and this was a father that had hired servants, and he had a lot of flocks and a lot of things and uh, so forth. But 
uh, this son came to him. Now you got to understand something. Basically, uh, in the in this culture, the son would not get the inheritance until the father dies. So this son comes to the father and he says, "Father, I want you to divide to to me my portion." And at that particular point, he went. He was breaking away from the father. He was saying, "I can do without." the father. I'm going to take ownership of that which is mine. And he basically was saying to the father that you are as good as dead to me. I'm going to go out on my own and do my own thing. And so it really was kind of a total slap in the face to the father. But but notice what the father did. Go to the next, go back to that slide. Praise God. And uh, let's take a look there. Verse 13. And so he divided to them his living. He gave them both their inheritance. Verse 13. And not many days after. In other words, he, he hung around for a little while. And then he decided to break away. Not many day, days after. Let's go back to the slide. Praise God. He says, not many days after the younger said, uh, son, gather all together, all, everything he had together, and he took his journey into a far country, someplace as far away as he could be. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living. In other words, you know, he, he took his part of the inheritance thinking, I can do as good uh, it, uh, or better in this situation far away from my family than being under the protection and under the care of my father. Let's go to the next slide. Praise the Lord. So he's all over in this far country and he's basically wasting in his inheritance and wasting his life. Verse 14. And when he had spent all, he spent all. All right. Now notice he took all this money that he had acquired and all these goods and he, and he even gave some of it away, but he wasted it. He didn't invest it. He didn't think of his future. He just spent all of it. And, uh, and he also was unprepared for what was going to take place, okay? Because there was a mighty famine in the land. Let's go ahead and stay on the slide while we're talking about these scriptures. Praise God. And it says he began to be in want. Now, he, he had given a lot of money to a lot of other people. But at that particular point, the people that that he thought were his friends weren't himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. Now, here's what's significant about this. Because when he was back with the father, he was basically somebody that was a part owner okay he was he he had possession of everything he was a joint heir with his brother of the father's inheritance but now he went to the world system and he joined himself to somebody who was a part of that system and uh and that, that person put him in the pig trough, all right? He had to go to the fields to feed the pigs. In other words, he now was subservient, a slave to that system. And that's where many people are today. They're a slave to their situation, to their jobs, to their sickness, to their to uh, what they have to do. You know, they're a slave to the bank because they owe money. They're a slave to somebody that they don't even like. And, and it's because they uh, fail to realize who their source is. When this son left the father, he was leaving his source and instead going to the world. And that's just the opposite of what we ought to do for our benefit, praise God. You see, he didn't even understand what he had. And because he didn't understand what he had, therefore he despised it and he walked away from it. Let's go back to that slide, praise God. And uh, let's read that, that next scripture there. 
Hallelujah. It says in verse 16, he would have filled his belly with the husks that the pigs eat. No man gave to him. All of his friends who he helped before weren't his friends before. Let's go to the next slide. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse when he came to himself. Hallelujah. Here's what ha happens when we stop listening to our source, when we stop listening to the Father God. Then we will go and we will join ourselves to the world and we listen to what they have to say and we have to do whatever they tell us we have to do. And finally, he said, you know what? I didn't listen to my father and I'm tired of listening to my boss in this situation, I'm going to listen to myself. So he listened to himself. And here's what his self said. How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? Oh, I'm a hired servant out here in the pig, pig trough. But if I was just back with the father, uh, if I was one of his servants, I would at least have plenty to eat. And here I am perishing with this hunger, even though I'm working. Verse 18, I will. And you know what? That's all we need to do is make a decision to say, I'm going to do something. I'm going to rise up from this situation. I will arise and go to my father. And, and say, in other words, I'll go back to my source and I'll say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me like one of your servants. Praise God. So he decided, you know what? That would be a whole lot better. I'm going to try that. And then let's go to the next slide and let's look at verse 20. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And he arose and came to his father. When he, when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, I want you to notice something about verse 20. Just keep your eyes on that scripture. Because uh, he, his father rose up and you see his father saw him a great way off, which means that he was looking. He was scanning the horizon. He saw him a great way off. The only way he could have done that is if his father was continuously looking for him. No, he didn't go and chase him down. He didn't send out a search party, but he was watching for him. He did realize that at some point he was going to get hungry and he was going to come back. His father said, saw him and he didn't talk to him about, you know, what he owed him. He came and he ran. That wasn't even dignified for him to do, to run and fall on his neck. See, the, the son should have to come bow before the father, but instead the father ran to the son. And I want to tell you, if you're away from the father today, if you're away from God, he is running to you because he sees that you're coming toward him. Oh, just make a little bit of a move. And he he will run toward you. And it says he fell on him and he kissed his neck. And in the Greek, uh, that word kiss there means he did it again and again and again. Verse 21, the son said unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no worth, no more worthy to be called your son. Do you realize that the father cut him off with what he said in verse 22? He didn't even let him finish his speech. It says the father said to his servants, listen, you bring forth the best robe. You put it on him. You put a ring on his hand. You put shoes on his feet. Praise God. He was giving him not just a, uh, his place back, but giving him authority. And praise God. And you see, he was clothing him with the robe of righteousness. He was putting on his uh, ring, uh, put it on his hand, excuse me, the ring, which meant that he had the, f the family authority, praise God. He put shoes on his feet, which meant that, that he, his walk was sanctified. Go to the next slide. To do this a little bit quick, praise God. It says, bring hither the fatted calf, not just any goat, not just any cow, but the one I've been setting aside 
for special company. You kill it, let us eat, be merry, for my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he's found. And they began to be merry. They began to have a party, praise God. They didn't talk about what he'd done. They began to party. Says his elder brother was in the field and he came and drew near to the house and he heard music and dancing. Go to the next slide, praise the Lord. Verse 26 says, he called one of the servants and he asked what these things meant. You see, this man was so engrossed in working all the time and trying to be a servant rather than a son. He was so religious, he didn't even understand the joy that he was hearing, the music that he was hearing. Then verse 27 says, he said unto him, your brother's come. The, the, your father's killed the fatted calf because he's received him safe and sound. You see, he was happy, but verse 28 says, the elder brother was angry and would not go in. Therefore, he, the, the father came out and entreated him. Oh, come on, let's party with us. Go to the next slide. Praise the Lord. I'll, uh, I'll just have to read this real quickly. He answering said to the father, all these years I've served you. In other words, he was, he was trusting in his works. <laughs> all these years I've served you. I haven't done anything against you. I, you know, I, I get, and you didn't give me a kid to make merry with my friends. But as soon as you're, as this, your son, not my brother, your son was come, which has devoured your living with harlots. You've ki killed for him the fatted calf. Calf. By the way, nobody else mentioned harlots. Only the, the elder brother did. And why was he thinking about that? You see, verse 31. And he said unto him, son, you are ever with me. Praise God. If you're in the father's house, you've got to understand. It's not just about working for God. You are always in the father's house. Praise the Lord. Let's go back there to verse 31. You're always with me and all that I have is yours. See, if you are a believer, everything that belongs to the father belongs to you. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the last slide. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It says, it was right that we should make merry and be glad for this, your brother, not just my son, your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. Praise God. You know, I think the elder brother learned as much as the younger brother did. I really do. Whether you've been in the faith for a long time or whether you are away from God right now. We all can rejoice in the fact that we are in the Father's house and we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And I've gone a little bit long, but uh, I just want you to see that the Father loves you more than you know. Praise God. And you can receive whatever he has for you.